Welcome to 7 News. The Broncos win tonight. They are champions, beating the Panthers 24 to 10. Big night here at Levi Stadium. It's also a big night in Denver as well, where fans are taking to the streets. Let's get to Molly right away to talk about what's happening in Denver. Yeah, and police right now are in riot gear and keeping a handle on crowds tonight. Excitement is building. Air Trucker 7 was just over downtown Denver. Crowds have filled the streets so far. We haven't heard of any injuries. Just a lot of people flooding downtown, as you can see there. Denver 7's Mark Stewart is leading off our team coverage tonight. Mark, it's pretty crazy on Market Street tonight. Okay, Molly, we're on the intersection of 20th and Market. Take a look into the street. We are just in the shadow of Coors Field. As you can see, a large crowd has blocked the intersection. One of the reasons why Denver police have now blocked access into downtown Denver from Interstate 25. That includes all of the major exits. Spear, 20th, 23rd, and 38th. You cannot access downtown Denver. This crowd here pretty much has been milling about. They haven't been violent. However, in the last 20 minutes or so, we have seen people lighting fireworks and firecrackers that obviously poses a safety problem. So that's one of the reasons they're trying to restrict uh, access to downtown. A very large crowd now, but take a look at some video we had from earlier in the night. All of Market Street was pretty much blocked off. And People could not move. It was literally shoulder to shoulder, arm to arm. The crowd has shrunk significantly. However, it has moved to Market and 20th, which, as you know, is a very big intersection for downtown tra traffic. Police are nearby where I am, at least. Uh, we haven't seen anyone. Well, there are some officers in tactical gear, but at this point, nothing has been done to break up this crowd. However, as it gets uh, to be later in the night, that's an issue they're going to have to address. And by the way, we just heard another firecracker go off. Molly, we will be here throughout the night. We'll keep you posted. But again, stay away from downtown Denver. Back to you. All right, Mark, we can only hope fans behave themselves. And Liz Gilardi is in the Larimer Square area. And Liz, you're seeing officers in riot gear there as well. Molly, yes, we are. Police are trying to keep fans in check. Let me show you what we are seeing right now. Police in riot gear standing here at the corner of 15th and Larimer, and you can see what a heavy police presence here. Really not too many fans in the area. Every once in a while, you'll get a group like this walking on by, and you know, pretty much they are just passing through. They aren't really congregating in this area, which has been a problem in the past. Let me take you down this way just to show you how empty empty Larimer Square is. You can see even more police up and down this Thank street, you, but the street is closed Thank right now. Much. And actually a lot of these businesses are closed as well. Just a couple bars on this street open, but some of them didn't even open today. So they're just trying to keep things peaceful here tonight and a lot of police out on Larimer Square. Reporting live, Liz Gilardi, Denver 7. All right, Liz, thank you. And Anne, a lot of people are celebrating here tonight. We just got a shipment of championship shirts and hats in ready for people to pick up tonight. It's pretty exciting That's in great. Santa Clara tonight too, I could only imagine. Oh, fans were just besides themselves, Molly. It was so exciting to be in that stadium tonight, and we're joined by Mayor Michael Hancock. You were inside. It was electric, wasn't it? It was electric. I barely have a voice right now. The Bronco fans were in force here, and it was just a tremendous display of Bronco country in, in the Bay Area. Yeah, and this, this speaks to the nation, right? Put Denver on the map tonight. Oh, absolutely. This is such an important game, and, and our not only Broncos as players showed up, but the fans showed up to show our pride and our team. Yeah, and let's talk about what's happening in Denver tonight. You all were obviously quite prepared for what could happen in Denver. Right. Well, the police department and, and the entire safety department has done a great job in kind of anticipating um, the celebration uh, tonight. And we want to continue to encourage everyone to act responsibly. Do not be destructive in the city. Uh, the police certainly will crack down and make sure that there are no shenanigans in the city. Celebrate, have a good time, but be safe and don't be destructive. And their strategy was to get in with the crowds this time, not Absolutely. They're out there, 
they're embedded with the crowd, and they're going to do everything they can to make sure that people don't step out of line. When are we having a parade in Denver? We're planning it for Tuesday. Okay. Um, we're going to start at noon at 17th and Wine Coop. Program begins at 1 o'clock in Civic Center. We'll invite all of Colorado to come out and uh, celebrate our team and the return of the Lombardi Trophy to Denver. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You we bet, appreciate Anne. it. Thank all you. right. So you heard it. Party on Tuesday, parade on Tuesday, and let's get to Lionel now because we're dying to hear from the players, and they have to be just so excited about this night, all of this event, Lionel. Well, and they did it. I mean, they did it, all right? We talked all week long about defense winning championships, and that's exactly what happened. I'm here with Brandon Stokely, two-time Super Bowl champion. Uh, hey, your friend Peyton caught up with you. He tonight. joined the club. <laughs> I love it. I he love joined it. the two-ring club. That's right. Wow, I mean, just take this in, buddy. Unbelievable. Levi's really Stadium. Broncos won the Super Bowl tonight, 24-10 over the Carolina Panthers. When you look at Peyton's numbers, though, um, it looks like a losing effort. They were one for 14 on third downs, 194 Awful. yards passing. Uh, it was terrible. One for 14 on third down. You can't win a football right. game in the NFL like that. This they defense did. is that good. That's how good this right. defense is. This defense was incredible. They sacked Cam Newton seven times. Uh, they caused four turnovers. Von Miller wow. strip, stripped uh, Cam Newton twice, and that was the difference in the game. As we look at some of the celebration here, it was awesome to see the final gun sound, to see Peyton Manning get his second Super Bowl championship, probably go out on top. And this defense being crowned as one of the best ever. No question. Best ever, I think. They, they played their biggest game on the biggest stage. Lights out. Defense wins championships, and we saw it tonight. There you have it. All right, let's hear from Peyton Manning tonight after this Super Bowl 50 title. Well, no, they're certainly different, but it's, uh, it's a special feeling. Um, I, I certainly know how hard it is to get here. It, it, it's a, it, it takes a lot of... Um, hard work and uh, got to have some got to have some good fortune and, and so we were very grateful to be here to be in this game to play in the 50 the Super Bowl and certainly to be victorious well to be victorious now uh, everybody asked Peyton afterwards uh, is this your last game is this your last rodeo and he said uh, I don't know yet yeah. and right? that's what we figured he wasn't yeah. gonna answer do we think so I think you know what a better way to go out than win the Super Bowl Hoist the trophy. Yeah, you can't. You can't go out any better way than that. And so I, I'm, I'm assuming that that's probably it. You know. And well, it was fun to watch it. Gosh, he's one of your best friends. But to see him lift that Lombardi Trophy like Elway did, to see Elway lift it and say this one's for Pat. What a night here at Levi Stadium. Unbelievable. And we got plenty more coming up. We'll show you more celebration. We'll take you inside the locker room. Aaron Anderson got so many great interviews. He'll be joining us. We'll hear from John Elway. All that coming up in just a few minutes on Denver Seven. Right now, let's go back to you. All right, thank you, LB. The Golden Game, Super Bowl 50, lived up to the hype after two weeks of waiting. The Broncos and Panthers, they got down to business. Broncos going for their third world championship. Peyton Manning, a career one and three in the big game. It's Cam Newton's first. Broncos came out and put three on the board in their opening drive, then followed up with this. A meeting of the minds. Von Miller sacks Newton, strips the ball, and it's recovered in the end zone by Malik Jackson. Denver's up 10-0. Carolina Panthers... They kept pounding, though. Jonathan Stewart, here he comes, goes airborne for six. Broncos led 13-7 at the break. Second half dominated by the defense. Lionel and Brandon talked about it. It wins championships. And Von Miller named Super Bowl 50 MVP, six tackles, two and a half sacks, and now a world championship. 24-10 final. Broncos get to hoist the Lombardi Trophy. We'll hear from both teams in just a bit. We're just getting started here. We're live in Santa Clara with Cruz. Lionel, Arn, and Brandon will join me later during Sports Extra. More highlights and a complete wrap coming up. For now, we're going back to Andrew Hill in Santa Clara. All right, thanks, Jemai. You know, to have a ticket to this game tonight, that was pretty special. People spent thousands of dollars to get inside. Well, Denver 7 reporter Eric Lufer was with the fans who got to watch this magical game tonight. Eric? Oh, I can see you on the risers. Woo! Broncos, baby! Oh, man, I'm losing my voice, and I don't care. There's Ann up on the risers. That's where all the media goes. This is where fans are still filing out. The stadium's clear now, but boy, Super Bowl 50, Manning, Von Miller, I can't believe it. I've been a fan since I was a baby. Take a listen to some other diehard fans. Ah, uh, no sound. We don't have any sound, unfortunately, but it doesn't matter. Because just, hey, all the fans are excited. 
take a look at the stadium here. Look at the, the big sign there. It says Super Bowl 50 champions. Oh yeah, this is huge, Ann. And trust me, just you can just trust me, the fans were very excited back to you, including me. <laughs> and you were screaming the loudest, I think. All right, thank you, Eric. We want to go to Mark Boyle now, Denver 7 reporter Mark Boyle. He's already out with the presses that are printing up T-shirts in celebration. Mark? Yeah, here they are, and uh, what a great look that is, isn't it? I'll tell you, it was all smiles around here when these guys were pulling the Panthers logo off of these presses and putting the Broncos logo on one of them. A lot of happy faces around here as they're starting to print a lot of these shirts. Now, these shirts were starting to print about the time that the Broncos scored that last touchdown. They'll be going on and printing thousands of these throughout the evening. These are the children's shirts printed out of this Denver warehouse. They will be printing well into the morning and then into uh, tomorrow. It's a process they've perfected as they prep the shirts for you to buy in the stores. So the gold, the blue, the orange, um, the white, and then it goes around to the heater and once it's on the heater it cures it and then at the end of the heater there's people putting a sticker for the NFL official logo. Again, they'll be printing well into the night and all the way through tomorrow to fulfill all of those orders for the shirts. Although we will tell you much happier faces here. Two years ago, they had to print all of the Seattle shirts. So a little bit of tension when they thought they may have to print some of the Panther shirts, but that's a good logo to stare at all night long. We're live in Denver, Mark Boyle, Denver 7, and back to you. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Mark. And we are just getting started as we are talking about the world champion Denver Broncos, the Super Bowl champions. Lionel has more from the players coming up here in just a bit, Molly. All right, thanks, Ann. And we just got word there will be a rally celebrating the Broncos on Tuesday. It starts in Civic Center Park with live music. And at noon, the parade kicks off at 17th and Wincoop. After the parade, there will be a rally in Civic Center Park featuring the Broncos players and coaches along with the governor and the mayor. Well, switching gears a little bit, it is a chilly night here in Denver. Stacey Donaldson has our first alert forecast. Stacey, you're tracking oh. a warm week. A definitely a warm week, but we have to make it through tonight. Our wind chill factor just made it to one below zero, and our temperatures will be in the teens all night long. We will turn things around, get some sunshine into tomorrow, but it's going to be a cold one, especially for folks that are out this evening evening celebrating 19 degrees right now in Denver. Our winds about 17 miles an hour and one below that wind chill at this point. Our current temperatures mostly in the teens and 20s here around the front range and we're going to be talking about just how warm it'll get as we go into our work week coming up in just a few minutes. That sounds pretty good. All right. Thank you. Colorado lawmakers have a busy week ahead from early education to puffer cars and sexual assault. We look at the bills being tackled in the legislature this week and the E. coli outbreak at Chipotle keeping some stores closed until late tomorrow afternoon. We'll explain why. And what was it like to be a fan inside the stadium tonight? Marshall Zellinger goes inside and talks to fans right after this.